started back in just right after World War II, and that their uh, seeing eye developed that program. A gentleman that came back from the war lost his vision, got involved with the government at that time of making it a law that guide dogs should be have free access as a general public. It got started in a very unique way. It started with an individual that was legally blind from New Albany, Ohio, named Stanley Dorn. Stanley wanted to assist the blind community back then in 1947 and got his training and started the guide dog school. We've started in 1956. We built the building here on the corner of Grubb and Town. The neighborhoods really watched out for us and helped us. In this environment, in our facility, when the harness comes off, the dog is just a pet. People will hear about us from other people that they know who have pilot dogs, maybe a family member or friend or someone they you know, randomly run into, uh, or their blind services, their eye doctor, someone will mention us. We get our dogs when they're puppies. Um, some of them are from, we have a small breeding program of our own, and then the rest are from breeders, mostly in the Ohio area. We're an in-residence facility. So someone who has never had a guide is going to be here for a four-week training course with us. And it is very much like a dorm. When they get here, we first try and get them acquainted with the building because they're in a new space, so they have to learn it. The hallways, their path to their room, to where they're going to be eating, um, to the main kind of hangout room during the day, and where they're going to be taking the dog out to go to the bathroom and those types of things. So we want to get them comfortable in the building. And then they're going to start taking walks with the trainers. I have the best job in the world. I am a trainer instructor with Pilot Dogs, so um, I alternate uh, about 10 months out of the year. I am training dogs like Caesar, um, getting them prepared from start to finish for everything they're going to need to know. And then a couple of times a year, I'll split that and I will actually come in and instruct the visually impaired how to use the dogs that we've trained. So I get a little bit of both. I'm a dog trainer and a person trainer. After a few days of that, they are paired with a dog, and their first experience with the dog is bathing them, which is <laughs> quite a first experience with a dog. Not nearly all of them are really that excited about getting a bath. <laughs> the biggest things are keeping me safe on the sidewalk, so he doesn't get to go off and sniff on the grass on either side, because then I'm gonna trip and fall. Um, any trash cans, bicycles, anything, construction cones, anything in the way, He's trained to get me around it so that I never even know it was there. Hopefully it's just a smooth movement and I don't have to stop and find out what's going on and he's going to keep me from tripping, falling, running into, bumping into anything. They're taught how to handle a stop sign. The stop sign they can eliminate by most people stop at a stop sign edge up right away. A stop light they'll sit tight if they've got a red light. So they're waiting what we call the full cycle. So at a traffic light they stop at, they're listening to the idle traffic to their left or their right, they're parallel. And when they hear that acceleration, they can run, we call that running interference, so that's safe to cross. There's no cost to the blind students who come here. We cover their round trip transportation, whether that's a plane ticket, a bus ticket, reimbursing someone for gas <laughs> for bringing them. Their stay here, which you know, includes three meals a day. We have a cooking staff. We have everything, we try and have everything that they need here, sheets, towels, all of that. Um, and then the dog, the dog's equipment, which is its harness and its leash, those are all included. Aside from, you know, spending money that they might want to bring, there's no cost here for getting a dog. So the only cost we ask them to keep in mind is once they leave, the veterinary costs. There's cane travel and there's other avenues, but a lot of the students that decide to get a dog are very pleased that they have gotten a dog for companionship. And as some of them say, you know, I go with a work for a dog or walk, walk with a dog, and when I work with a cane, nobody's ever told me I had a good looking cane. I actually always wanted to do this. I, you know, I was a little kid, I wanted to be a lion tamer and, and work with dolphins and all those exotic things. 
Um, and I read a book actually about uh, a girl who lost her sight at 13, right when I was around that age, and it talked about everything about how her life changed and people treated her differently and the limitations she faced. And it went through going through Get a Guide Dog and how hard it was. And since I knew I wanted to work with animals, and then I saw the difference that you could make with animals, it was pretty much a matter of then growing up and getting to be exactly what I wanted to be.